what's going on guys so today is finally the day you've all been waiting for and it is the class of 2019 otherwise known as Shoki's best and worst kits list now uh, last year I broke everything down so this year I'm gonna have a bit less because while I did a few 2019 kits um, I didn't do as many as I thought I did, especially in the MG category, which I believe last year I only had three. This year I only had two. So, uh, and that's, and if you're unfamiliar with the rules, it has to be something that I built in 2019. That is a 2019 kit. Um, and this is a broad range of things. And because it is so broad, but there's not a lot of any one specific thing this year, everything's in one category with the exception of one build because it kind of doesn't fit with everything else um so i'm going to do the bottom five and dishonorable mention and i'm going to do the top five with honorable mention and then i'm going to do my favorite builds as a separate you know separate thing um and then i'm going to go from there with transformers figures stuff like that so breaking down all the different uh, things of the year. I might not go into too much depth on uh, action figures because there's not a ton of them or there are but nobody necessarily cares. So those will probably all be lumped into just my favorite things of the year like I did last year. So I've got a lot of videos coming and as you saw in the intro uh, there's quite a lot of kits to go over. Now real quick once again if you're unfamiliar the way I judge these things is by the quality of the build whether or not it's kind of hard to build, or the plastic's good, are there a ton of stickers or paint detail that is necessary uh, to make it good? Uh, I go by articulation, so obviously how articulate is it? Is it limited by anything in the build? Is it got double jointed, you know, arms, legs, uh, torso rotation? Because sometimes that matters. Um, is it fun? So was it a fun build? Was it fun to work on? Is it fun when it's completed? Um, there's a fun factor to it. It's not just work. You know, it's got to be some kind of funness. And then coolness factor. Is it freaking cool? Because some of these things are a garbage build, but they're really cool when they're done. Um, so that's kind of the extra factor there. And then if there were any ties, the tiebreaker was views on reviews. However, there's a large number of these things that we'll be looking at here that have not been reviewed as of yet because I needed to fill out the ranks and I had a lot of 2019 kits sitting and ended up with a lot more extra time to build. So uh, I couldn't really use that as a tiebreaker so I had to just finagle the numbers. So usually you guys want to start out at the bottom and work your way up. So that's what we're going to do. So this will be the top or the bottom five kits of the year with, you know, an honorable mention, so to speak. So let's get to it. And first up at the number five worst kit of 2019 is the good old Maganok. And it has a score of 26. And so it'll give you a good idea. So basically everything was ranked, uh, you know, 1 through 10. And this thing scored a 26. Now, while it's not a terrible build, the quality is pretty good. The articulation is decent. It wasn't really that fun, and it's not super cool. Now, it does need stickers. So it's got big stickers here up on the shoulders on the... It's got some stickers here on this thing, but frankly, it's just kind of boring. Now, while I enjoyed it, which I did do, it's just kind of meh, you know. But to give you an idea that this is what's at the top of the bottom, there's a whole lot of good stuff that's just in the mid-range. Um, so it, it's it's not terrible, but it's not great. And the fact that, you know, they have the P. Bandai versions so that you could have the quote-unquote customs. And also the fact the gigantic, ridiculous 40-pack uh, or 36-pack of them uh, sort of takes away from the coolness factor of it to some degree. And in previous things, now mind you, this is a normal release. If something is a P. Bandai, it automatically loses some points. So that, that's kind of a thing. So there it is, number five.
right behind it at number four is his commander kind of <laughs> the hg sandrock so we've been waiting a long time to get some new hg gundam kits from wing and well sandrock it's just okay i mean it's not great there's a lot of paint apps that could be done like painting the inside of the fenders gray painting some of the vents on the legs that would need to be done all the little sticker detail here here there and frankly it's just boring i mean it's not bad the quality is pretty decent the articulation is decent but it wasn't fun i didn't really enjoy it it was just like eh, here's a you know just another kit um and it's the style while you know, subjectively, I prefer the Endless Waltz version. It's not bad. It's just not for me. But yeah, it's just, it's not great. It has one less point than the Magwanok, uh, because it was actually less fun than the Magwanok. Uh, I did enjoy building it on the live stream, but that's about it. Like, as it went, like, it was just kind of meh. I, I have no, no major positive feelings towards it, but also no major negative feelings towards it it's just kind of blah and it's not invoking anything in me so that's why it hit number four now number three is something i have not reviewed yet it probably won't be on a proper review so this will just be it right now and it is the new zuccarello haro now here's the thing this thing is really cool it was a lot of fun, but obviously a horror, not super articulated, and the quality just is what it is. It does need stickers, so you've got the little tattoo sticker here. It's, you don't have to put on the Xeon emblem, but you would have stickers for the little sides on the arms. I painted those, which is almost a perfect match for the color. And then also the uh, missile turrets on the front here, coming back around, I did paint those. So those were some pretty god-awful stickers. But other than that, it's really cool. It's a lot of fun. I really couldn't wait to get it, to be totally honest. I was so psyched to see this one. Uh, it was just a lot of fun. I like some of the Haro things that we've gotten, like the um, Ball Haro, but that was technically a 2018 kit, sadly, so it didn't count in this list. But the Haro Plus are a lot of fun, and I do dig them. Uh, there is actually the new uh, Full Mechanics Haro is out, or uh, Figure Eyes Mechanics Haro, the pink one. I, I don't know if I'll get it. We'll see. Um, obviously not enough time to get it into this year, but this guy, because of the complete lack of articulation and stuff like that is why he's so low on the list, but obviously it's a good one, but that's why this list is different. It's not that it's bad. It just doesn't have enough qualities within itself to raise above, uh, it's, it's, it's coolness level. So that's it for number three. And at number two is another kit you guys have not seen yet because it was one of these quick builds I threw together at the end of the year. And it is the P. Bandai HG uh, <laughs> Advance of Zeta. And automatically, right off the bat, it's P. Bandai. It loses points. You still had the regular versions of the Hazels that were, uh, were normal release, but then you had to buy the P. Bandai version to go with it if you wanted the water slides or you wanted the add-ons for other things later or you had to buy this now if i bought the mg version that would also fall under a bad category now it is super limited while pretty cool and a nice add-on kit for the hazel custom uh it's so limited and everything it doesn't matter you do have to paint a bit you do have to paint some gray areas over here you have to paint some uh red little small areas little lines there but there's frankly there's not a lot to it and it costs too much money for what it is it's not super expensive but it's just this there's there's nothing else um i have not put the water slides on yet i will uh for the actual proper review when i get to it um but yeah the fact that this is a thing in and of itself is kind of the problem like it should have been sold with the p bandai new release of the hazel custom again uh same thing for the blue version instead of selling all of the AOZ, aoz stuff completely separately throw some of it together you know that it really does hurt it for me so that's why it's way down here at the bottom
All right, so before we get to the number one worst kit of the year, I'm going to talk about a dishonorable mention, so to speak. And mind you, this doesn't mean it's close to the bottom, but it is just outside of the bottom five. It is technically number six. But the reason I wanted to talk about it is because it's something that could be really good and just kind of isn't. It's also something I have not reviewed as of yet, but I just finished it, literally the final build of 2019. And it is the HG Penelope. Now, I'll give my quick thoughts on it. Obviously, the full review will come later. This thing is not as good as it should be. It is really cool. It was kind of fun. But it really doesn't feel like a modern HG. What it feels like is an RE100 that got shrunk down. The details aren't as good as they should be. No, the lines aren't super crisp. The plastics don't feel great. And the stickers are stupid and sometimes really not good. But because I wanted to do it as a straight build just to really get after it, that's what it is. And of course, it's weird. Flying rooster mode uh, is just weird. Maybe peacock. It's one of those things. But So this guy isn't at the bottom. He's just outside of the top five. But that's how low something this expensive is on the list. So, and when I do the real review uh, coming up at the beginning of twenty nine or twenty uh, twenty, I'll go into more depth about it. But that's that's pretty much it for the dishonorable mention. And last, and certainly least, the final bad and worst kit of 2019 was this guy the double o jaloon or jaloon double o with bike thing uh everything from this particular series seems to just not be great it's a new sd line you guys saw the review in double october now while i made it look really cool it took an enormous amount of effort to get it even to this level, and it's still not 100% of how it should look. In, out of the box, it comes with a buttload of stickers that don't even get it close to how it should look. The bike is incredibly disappointing. The lack of molding, uh, molding things in different colors. The actual Gundam needs so much extra detail that isn't given to you in so, in so many different ways. And it's super limited, even for an SD. And given that we were also graced with the SDCS stuff, you know, last year to see a new SD line that goes backwards, it just hurts. So because of the sheer amount of work that went into this, it, it really does fall down. The quality is really, really low. It was kind of fun and it's cool looking, but every time I look at it, I just look at the sheer amount of effort that I had to go just to make it look this decent. And Ha making it look decent, yeah, it really does kill it for me. You know, it's one thing if you choose to add detail. If you choose to add some details that aren't necessarily there, that's one thing. If it's detail it's supposed to have and it just doesn't, that's what hurts it ultimately. And that, that's what I kind of want to get across to you guys. So there's so much detail that had to be added just for it to look the way it does on the box. And that's where it falls really, really flat. Um, even if you guys liked it during Double October, which I don't think you did, but it is what it is. Anybody who's built this kit probably will agree. Anybody who's built a lot of these will probably agree. And then the funny thing is, I really dig the motorcycle. The 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 not Blue Eyes White Dragon motorcycle. Uh, but other than that, it's crap. And uh, it was the end of this particular line for me. I'm not interested in any more of them, even if there is another... Uh, another double O kit in there. Like if Rodimus wants to build it for next double October, that'll be fine. But that that's going to be it for me. So guys, that's it for the top worst bottom worst. It's tricky. Uh, kits of 2019. So of course, if you agree with this list, let me know down below, hit that big old thumbs up button. Of course, if you do like this video and of course you want to see more stick around for the best, uh, build, list that's coming up really soon um and then from there i will do some of my favorite builds and then all the other things so 
yay for that of course hit that subscribe button if you are new to the channel there's a lot of new people we're uh headed towards 5300 right now if i remember correctly um it'd be really cool to hit 5500 really soon um i don't know why it's just a cool number for me but uh we've grown a lot this year and i'm digging it and of course thanks for watching i uh, hope you have a good new year and eric finish that unicorn yep so see you guys on the next one